Um, I'm going to go ahead and get started here. And um, and hopefully you were able to uh, find the agenda and on the agenda page, if you need to go back there, there is a document for this presentation that I'll be showing. So if you want to go and get that document right there on the bottom, um, you can sure do that. And that might help you as we're going through. If I go too fast or too slow, or you miss something, um, saves you from having to take any notes and that kind of stuff. So um, taking a look at that document, it is a Google Doc and <clears throat> it is, I tried to lay it out the best I could. Uh, there's just so much that you do to make a Google form and doing it in a specific order helps you save some time in those types of things. So I did put some hints and reminders at the top. And so when you're making a Google form, and hopefully everybody has at least a basic understanding of the Google forms, because I'm gonna kind of cruise through those pieces so I could get to the assessment part and the, the key part. Um, but there are some things you can do. I know test security, especially when we're doing distance learning is always a big question. So just for some test security, a few things that Google Forms has built in is you can shuffle the question order and, and you'll see how to do these later on, but these are just reminders that you can do it. You can also shuffle the answers to the questions. So if you're doing a multiple choice, like you have option one, option two, so on, you can have those shuffled on the questions too. So even if the kids are on the same question and they kind of can see or tell that, or you know, they write down A, B, A, B, A, B, for, and then try to share that with their friends. <clears throat> if you shuffle the question order and shuffle the options, um, even if they try to do that, that would help prevent a little bit of cheating, hopefully. Um, and then creating a navigation path is something you can do. It does take time. Now I'll show you kind of how to do that but it is a little bit of time consuming. But the nice thing with that is if kids get a basic question right, you can move them on to a tougher question. But if they get it wrong, you can show them a little review, maybe have them try another question of similar level. So I, I like to think of math when I'm, when I'm explaining these because most people understand how math questions get harder as you go down the line. So that's something that you can do. So I'll show you how to do that too. Um, and that also helps if you're in person and they kind of see somebody else's screen and they're like, I haven't seen that. And, and then they kind of know, oh, they must be different. And then they tend to not try to look as much. So another hint is that you can use images for both the question and for the answer. So if you want to just post a picture and then ask them to reflect on it or do something like that, you can do that. That could be your question is the picture itself. And then if you have pictures for answers too. So especially for the elementary and younger kids, um, that is helpful to do it that way. You could be posting pictures of yeses, no, and that kind of thing. Um, also for students. If you add those in, um, they tend to do a little bit better looking at pictures sometimes than their reading levels. Um, as I'm going here too, just real quick, if you have a question that you want answered right away, please just pop in and say, hey, I got a question, okay, um, so that I can uh, get to your question right away. Or you can post it in the chat and I'll try to remember <laughs> to go back and take, take a peek at that. All right. So the other part then that um, I think is key is this paragraph underneath the image one. Always take the test yourself first. So if you're gonna use it as an assessment, and I just say test because it's easier to type, but if you're gonna do a test, take it yourself first. The reason for that is the spreadsheet on the back end. When you take a test, it populates a spreadsheet of all the answers and in every column, there's going to be each question. So you'll be able to look at that first line and you'll know what the right answer is. So if you do do any grading that is manual, 
you can go back and see what the answer was and do some comparison there. And it also allows you to do easy conditional format answers. So if you are looking at a couple of other que questionable questions that don't auto grade, um, that conditional formatting can be helpful too. So I can show you that later as well. Um, and then when you're setting up your form, you can also set it up or you don't have to set it up. It automatically calculates all of those three things there for you. So that's nice, I know, for reflecting and looking at your, your tests and making sure that they were val valuable and good questions and that kind of thing. Um, I know our PLC, we stop and we look at was that question even written well? Or was that a poor, poorly written question? Why did they get it wrong? Did I forget to teach something? And so having that frequently missed questions is very nice. And then it also graphs the ones that are correct answers and that kind of thing. So you actually see a graph, which is a nice visual. And it'll calculate your average median and range of, of your score. So you kind of know where they landed and if they're ready to move on and that type of stuff. So. That is one nice feature that um, Google Forms has built into it as well. So taking a look at some of the features here, now I, I went back and forth on how to do this because I'm not in person, so I can't like walk around and, and help you as I'm going like I do with students. But if you would like to make a form, you can sure do that. Or if you're on this page, I made a sample form there. So if you go back up underneath the initial paragraph, I made a sample form so that it already has a few things on there for you. You're welcome to go get that. It looks like this. So I just called it a personal finance pretest, and I just have some random things in here, really. It's, it's not an actual test that I use. But I wanted you to at least have a sample that you could look at as you are um, seeing some of these things. So I'll be going back and forth a little bit to show you each of these pieces. So on the top part, oops, let's go back up there. On the top part, there are a variety of icons and you may see some and you may not see some of those things. So I'm just gonna go through those real quick that you can see these are the ones I'm talking so some of you may not have this puzzle piece. It's the add-ons. So just like all other Google products, you can add like extra programming things on there. And I use Google Forms for a lot of things. I use it for teaching, but I also use it for working in my PLC and working with um, teaching teachers and staff developments and those types of things. So I have quite a few. Um, add-ons that I've done, and that just allows me to do a few more advanced things that um, allow you to make working with forms easier. The second one is your theme. So how do you just want it to look? The colors, those types of things, pretty simple. When you're done, you can preview it to make sure that what you see is what you actually wanted. And then your settings are your kind of key ones to be thinking about to start with. So if we take a look at the settings, we have three tabs at the top. Don't forget to do all three. So the first one is your general stuff. Um, I always collect the email addresses. Um, usually I'll try to restrict it to BHM schools so that um, if they are sharing it or mom or dad try to get on during distance learning, they're not able to, et cetera. So you can see a few of your options there. And then you do have the option to let them edit it. So if you're using it as a formative and you want them to be able to go back, then you can allow them to go back and change it. And you can also let them see the summary of charts. I use that in my um, BPA activity. If like my officers are doing a poll or, you know, when can we get together to do a social activity, then I open that up so that my officers can see and everybody else can see too what, what everybody was responding to. On a quiz or something like that, I definitely would not open it though. The second tab is the presentation part of it. So how do we want 
um, the questions to go. So here are a couple of things that I tend to check. First is the progress bar. Students like to see that they're moving along. They like to see they're almost done. Um, so unless it's a really long quiz or test, maybe don't do that one. But um, I like to show them you are making progress. Keep going, you're doing okay. And then there's the shuffle, shuffle question order. And then if you want them to be able to do a second response, maybe you're like, take it once and you have some reviews on there and then you want them to try it again, you could sure let them do a second one. The last one um, is oftentimes forgotten, but there is a confirmation message. If you ever look at the end of your form when you're done taking it and you're, you hit submit on your form, there's a generic message and you can actually set that. So to communicate with your kids, uh, if you have a specific saying or, you know, just kind of make it more personal. And that's one way that they will get to know you is by your wordage that you use there. So remember to put a confirmation message for when they hit submit and they're done. Um, and then the quizzes tab on the right hand side. So the quizzes on the right um, allow you to turn it into the quiz. So in order to assign points and do the auto grading and put in an answer key, you have to check that button. So that's the key one. Um, otherwise the features that I'm going to be showing you, they won't show up. So make sure that you hit that. You also do if you are on Chromebooks. I hear a lot of schools now that are one-to-one -one Chromebooks and that kind of thing. You can do locked mode on your Chromebooks. So just something to think about if you want to learn more about that, they put the learn more right on there for you. And then because we're doing the grading piece, you need to decide when you want them to see their grade. So it can be immediately after they hit submit at the end of the quiz, or you can turn it on and be later and then you decide when to send it out. The way they would get it then is through an email. So you have to have email collection on in order to do that. And then you have to go back in and decide when to let it go and release the question or release the answers. Kids that you say you have all day to take this quiz, you might want to do that. Otherwise, they'll get their responses and then they can call or text the next kid and, and that type of thing. So something to keep in mind, you might want to do that if you're using it during distance learning or if you have multiple sections in person even. So that first hour doesn't tell second hour, et cetera. And then you decide what the kids will see too. So do you want them to see their missed questions and the right answers? Um, you can decide that. And then if you want them to see the point value. So if you have some questions are one point, some are three, some are five, and you want them to see that, you need to turn that on. Otherwise they will not know how many points each question is. So that's your settings. If you do change anything, make sure you hit the save. That I found was a, Kind of a strange thing because Google usually saves everything for you um, but don't forget to hit the save and it's tucked way up in the corner too where you're you're concentrating on the left and you forget to look to the right so make sure you hit save over there if you've changed anything so that's that settings bar and then on the other side of the send there's a more option and there is one more thing that I suggest you adjust in the more option and that is your preferences. You may have to scroll down like I just had to do, um, but I suggest you do one thing under the preferences. And you can see some of the other do, you can add a collaborator. So if you do teach the same class as somebody else, you can add those teachers and you can work on it together. And then there also is the add-ons. So if you do want some of those add-ons, that's where you go to actually get them. But under the preferences, if you have found that now, the one thing that, um, or two, I guess I should say, that I think you should think about is make all questions required. Otherwise, when you go to and make every question, you have to click the box. So for every question, you have to click, click, and remember to click. So if you just come in here, you can just make it required right away. So they have to answer every question. And the other one is having a default quiz point value. Um, if you don't set this, it is just tedious. On, again, every question you have to go in, turn it to one, and it's just another tedious thing to do. So you can take those two things out of making your questions and make them automatic. So save yourself a little bit of time by setting those two values 
turn those on and then set your value. So I'm gonna set each one to one. Now I can change that though, but when I go onto the question, it'll be set at one. So if I wanna change a question and make it five points, I can do that to that one question, but for all the other ones, it'll keep it at a one. And again, don't forget to hit your save. So those are some key things to the default setting the preferences. The other part is anything that you change on here is your default now. So if you make another form, this is what it will be set at. So the next time you make a form, you might you should probably come in and check and make sure that you still want those things. And notice you can also automatically turn on collect email addresses. So every form that'll be turned on, questions required will be turned on, and my point values will be ones. Brenda? Yes. When it says automatically collect email addresses, what what function does that start? How does how do you get the email addresses? Um, when the kids log in, it'll take the email address that they logged in as. Okay, so if they have a school email, it'll automatically use that. Yep, it'll be it'll ask them when they go to the form. It'll ask them for their email, and they gotta type their email in then to get to the form. Okay, thanks. Yeah. So those are the key things, kind of at the top there. Um, I'm going to scroll into here and present this a little bit. So now it's time to actually make your, so there's a few things to kind of think about when you're setting up your questions. First of all is your type of question that you're going to use. In the second bullet here, I have the three that um, allow for easy automatic automatic grading, so your multiple choice, your checkbox, and your drop downs. Drop downs are huge with your modifications for your special ed students. Um, it makes it so much easier for them that they um, see those options as they pull down the drop down. And the nice thing is uh, with that one too, the uh, the accidentally clicking multiple things, which is kind of what happens with your checkbox. The checkbox opens up have allowing multiple checks where multiple choice and drop down, you can only pick one. So just kind of think about that if you don't want them to accidentally be checking things or selecting more than one, you need to do multiple choice or drop down. The catch is, some students in my grades have figured out that if they see a checkbox question, they know they have to check more than one. It's kind of a, a tell question, even if you, um, but if you wanna make sure they select more than one, of course you would put that in your, in your question as well, but you do have to do a checkbox for more than one answer. And then there's, the other pieces is making sure that you mark whether it's required or not and shuffle it or not. And for shuffling the question, um, you can do that with those three dots there you see in the picture. And then if you wanna move your questions, one thing that I have found about moving is when I move them, sometimes they don't move on my spreadsheet as well. So if I type up 10 questions and I make my spreadsheet and I go back and I move some questions, my spreadsheet sometimes doesn't match with that. So decide if you want to put like a number one for the first question, two, et cetera. If you do that, then you can't shuffle your questions. But those are just some things to think about as for ordering and that kind of stuff. And then the question, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the answer key screen where we'll pick the right answer. So you can see at the top here, the correct answer is moo. So that will have a green checkbox on it. And then we're gonna look at how you add that answer feedback. So this is where you can give them immediate feedback. If I got it wrong, what do you want them, what do you wanna say or have them do? If they got it right, what do you want to say? So this is where you 
can automate it and give that immediate feedback. Now, when you are doing the feedback, you have three options of things you can send them. You can send them the text, so you can see the text that's typed there. And then on the bottom left, you can see you can, you can direct them to a link or to a video as well. So if you want a little bit of a review or you want them to watch something again, you can actually send them to those items and they can see what those are. So let's take a look at that stuff and see if we can do this. So if you have the quiz um, or if you have one started, feel free to be playing around with me as we're doing this. So here's just a basic question to make a, you just click on the plus sign and then it'll ask for your question. There's that image piece if I want that on there and here's the type. So usually most of my quizzes are multiple choice and then I have a, one or two pieces where I have them write responses so that I can see their full understanding. So then you can do a paragraph as well. But again, these three middle ones are the ones that will auto grade. So I'm just gonna do a multiple choice. What is the best color of our school? <laughs> oh, question mark. And then here's another tip. If you do a question that is preset, like it may populate these. So should we play? So you can see even as I type should, there's suggestions here. So it's thinking that you want option one to say yes, option two to say no, and option three to say maybe. So if you start with certain questions, you may get this automatically, and then you can just hit add all, and it saves you from typing those in your options. So that's kind of a nice built-in feature too, depending on how you start your questions. Watch for that to save yourself some, some work. I don't know why they went away. And then you can always add other so that they can type something in if you want. And I don't know why they'd keep disappearing on me. <laughs> So I'm going to go to my question I already have made. All right, here we go. So, oh, that's the, all right. So once you get those in, like I said, the second step then is to put your answer in. So you need to click on answer key to get to where we can um, set the point value and do those other things. So click on answer key. And it looks very similar, so you kind of got to, pay close attention to what you're trying to do. <clears throat> and then here you can see there's the point value. So if you had that preset, it should be what you had it preset at. And then you just click on what's right or wrong. So if all three were right, you can turn all three on or just the one. And then you can add that feedback. So here I already had in feedback if you were right, woohoo! Uh, feedback for incorrect answers. I don't know why they get the wow, but you could do that. <laughs> but again, you could just go into that add feedback and then you can change things. So that's where you can do a link, a video, and you can play with those options. <clears throat> and again, make sure you hit that save. So that's what the automatic grading allows you to do then. So now when they answer this question, you do not have to come in and do any of this grading. They'll get that feedback. And then you hit done when you are done answering that question and setting the key. And that is it for the basics of making your questions. So does anybody have any questions at this time? No. Nope. All right. Well, if you are looking at that doc, we went through the questions and the answer key. And then 
this part is the time consuming piece. <laughs> so the sections part allows you to do these um, differentiated quiz based off of their answers. And on the sample one, you can see I already have done that. The first thing you need to do in order to do it is create sections. So sections are the different parts of your quiz. So here I have section one of eight. So in section one, the title is there and collecting their email address because I had turned that on. And then I just have a couple of basic questions there. Then section two, I set up to be a review section. So in section two, if they get a, a question wrong, they're gonna come here and they're gonna watch this video. So this is my review. And then I'm gonna ask the question again. So you can either ask the question again, or you can have a slightly different one. You don't even have to have another question. It could just be watch this review before you can, but you can decide that. And then if they get done with that one, then they continue on to the next section. So then they would go to set question three, and then four, and so on. So you kind of end up with a lot of sections and I suggest naming your section. So the first thing when you make a section, I'm gonna scroll to the bottom here and do a sample one. So if I'm on my last question and I make a, a section and that's the double arrow on the right hand side. So our questions are up here and this is our add section. So now I'm on section nine. I'm going to title this review for question three. Oh my, really bad typing today. <laughs> now you don't have to leave that on there. You can actually turn that off a little bit later, but as you're determining where you go from questions, it really helps to label these. Otherwise it just says go to section nine and you don't know what it is. So you'll see what I mean by that. Um, but once you're here, then you would just add in um, a question that has what you want them to do or see. You could just do text. You could just do a video. So you have those options. So on that other one, I just had them do a video, right? So that's what those other options are there. So let me show you how to set that navigation then. So how here's long, that. How sure. long video can you do? Boy, I don't know if I've ever seen a limit. Okay, thanks. Yeah, because it goes to you, the YouTube usually. Um, so you might have to upload it to YouTube. I don't know if they've changed that. Okay. Oh no, there's a URL. So you could do a URL. Oh, okay. yeah, nope, it does say YouTube URL. So they do still have, you know, they are associated. So <laughs> it does need to be a YouTube. So you might have to load your videos onto YouTube. Um, so then what you do when you get your question, you're like, okay, this is the right answer. So I'm in section two as a review. Section three has my next question. So since they got it right, they get to skip to question three. So these guys would never go to section two. And here's where you can see that's what I labeled that section. So section three, I called question three. Those that got it wrong, you need to go to section two, the review for it. And all you do to set those is just pull down the arrow and there's all your sections. So here's that new one. So review for question three. See how that helps you instead of just seeing the section number. So try to label them. And then of course you could also do submit form too. So if it's the last question, there were no section for them to go to, you would just say submit form when it's the last question. So that really allows you to differentiate. Um, some kids could get that formative review as they're going, and then others would jump right into the next question. So it's time consuming. I'm gonna warn you that's time consuming. Um, and maybe you don't even wanna do every question as a review, but maybe kind of those key concept type ones. 
The other thing I saw one teacher do at one time, I don't know how coordinated, she must be very coordinated, because what she had was, um, it was a math teacher, and she had three questions that were very similar, and the kids had to answer all three questions, but she had them all go back to the same review because the review covered all three parts of it. So I can see you doing that if you have a PowerPoint presentation or something like that that you're gonna post as a review. If it covers more than one concept, you could have multiple questions go back to that same thing and they could review that whole thing. Um, so as you go to your next question, again, I want them to go to a section based on their answer. So it's in the bottom right there. That's the three buttons, it turns it on. And then you're like, I want them to go back there again. So they got it wrong again, you're going back. So even though this is section three or section two or section 10, like if the material is in an earlier one, they can go back to that as well. So those are just some hints and tips if you're gonna do the navigating part. Um, and then the last part is make a full question with answer key, with the um, answers in there and your movements, and then duplicate. You'll be surprised how many times you can use a lot of the same things um, for those options. So then I would duplicate and um, set it. So. I know a lot of people worry, well, then the third one's always the answer. It's always C, and that's what I tell my kids. I always guess C if you don't know. But you can move your questions, too. So if you duplicate, then just move these around. So then the right answer is A, and all you do is click, and when you retype, it goes right over it because it highlights it. So you don't have to hit the delete. You can just start typing, and it'll fix that. And then again, the right answer goes to the next section. It's always going to be that. So now that's preset. My answer is preset. So it saves you a little bit of time if you make one full question, set it all up, and then um, do the duplicate. So that was a lot of information. <laughs> um, I did put on the Google Doc then kind of those directions. I suggest if you are going to do navigations to set all of the Try to decide on all your sections first. So section one is question one, and then a review for question one would be section two. Section three would be question two. Section four would be review for question two, et cetera. So that um, you have it all ready when you're ready to get into the questions. So you're not going back and forth between all of those windows. And then just go through and then, like I said, the last thing, once you get one question done, then duplicate it and save yourself that time. And here's where the section piece to be reminded where to go for that. So it's the three dots in that bottom right. And then turn on, go to section. So any questions on making the quiz? You know, sometimes you just got to get in and try it out. All right. And then if there are some individual questions that you are going to need to grade yourself, I did put down here kind of the steps for that as well. Um, basically, when you're on your quiz, you'll go to the responses instead of the questions. And then here's those summary things I was talking about. So here, my average score is 1.47 out of 10. My median, my range, here's the graph. So I can quickly see, oh, this was not very good. And then I can see, oh, these are the questions people struggled with the most. So maybe that tomorrow, those are the questions I address in my review with the kids and that type of thing. Or I go back and I look at those questions and be um, questioning myself. Did I write that well? Did I have a good written question to begin with. And then you can see who all took it and the responses per question. So Brenda, I have a quick question. Yep. 
is this why you say like you default you like you set it up as a quiz so that it gives the it gives the the data like this because i've done four it will before. still give you data like this if you do um it'll just give you the pie charts and stuff if you do just a survey if you leave it as a survey okay but you won't get how many are right or wrong you won't okay. get this because there's no point value assigned you got to make it a quiz to assign point values okay thank you yeah so then once you get into the responses you can kind of get a glimpse of everything also on here under the responses, you can say whether you're still accepting. So if you say you have till 11 o'clock tonight to take your quiz at 11 o'clock, go in and make sure you turn that off so that nobody can take it after that. So that's where you do that. More three buttons here where you can do a few other things. So you can get email notifications if you get new responses. You can unlink the form, etc., so that it takes the link off. So if you send the link to somebody, now it makes it unvalued or unusable. And then here's where you can make it into a Google Sheets. So if you want to work with it in a different program other than Google Sheets, you can do the download as CSV. So you could bring it into like Excel if you're more comfortable there. Um, but otherwise, when you click on the spreadsheet button, Here's the spreadsheet I was talking about. And if you took the quiz first, remember yours would be first because it always timestamps automatically and the first one is always the first line. So you can see how, were, how many were true, how many were false and the graph showed that as well. But what I like to do in some of mine, especially with classes where I have um, like new students and I don't really know like who's getting it and it's kind of hard to tell um, what parts are going well. Sometimes I like to come in here and do the conditional formatting to apply color to wrong answers so that it highlights things that are wrong and I can see uh, commonalities and that type of thing. So if you've never done conditional formatting before, um, what you do up under your Oh, and see, I am a spreadsheet user, so this is uh, different for me. I gotta find it, formatting, I'm guessing. There we go. Conditional formatting under format. It allows you to set some formatting rules based on a thing. So since I selected the D, it's saying apply to the whole range of D. And what do I want it to do then? So my rule for formatting, format the cells if the text does not contain, because I want to mark the wrong ones, and then I put in the value or um, the right answer. So then I would type true, because the answer was true. So you can see that false will now highlight. And you can decide what you want it to highlight as. It's defaultly set to this bluey green color. Um, I know a lot of people associate red with wrong. So you could do that. Um, and it will then quickly mark those. And you'll see all the rest are wrong, but as people populate in, it would mark it white or that color if you want. So you could do that for the, all the other ones too. You just keep adding rules. So if I do column F here, so I'm gonna change this to F. X does not contain your, because that's one part that's in here that's not in here, then it will highlight. So those are all the ones that were wrong. They selected something that was wrong. So that's how you do conditional formatting. And it kind of just gives you a, a glimpse of what they look like. And you can see I did a couple other ones there too. Um, on my, Initial surveys I usually do with the, my classes where I ask, what's your grade? You know, tell me about your background. I ask questions like, how comfortable are you with computers? Have you taken a computer class? And those types of things. And that I also use my highlighting for. So the kids that don't like computers, they don't like to type, <laughs> they, 
they, I even asked the question, why did you take this class? And if they put in there because there was nothing else available, I highlight them because then I know right away that first day, okay, these are the kids I really need to connect with quickly because they're at high risk of not liking my class. They're coming in with some type of tendency that I'm going to see a risky uh, behavior from. So I ask those types of questions too, and then I use my highlighting the kids I need to find and connect with tomorrow immediately. So that is a lot about Google Forms, getting more deep into those. If you do need any other help, feel free to use these um, help links as well. And hopefully they will um, bring you to the spots where you need any help. So, what questions do we have then? I'm gonna stop sharing here and let everybody talk, ask questions. Okay, so of course I have to ask questions about um, more extended answers. Sure. So then, do you have any tics, tips or tricks for reading the little essay or the short answer? Do you, you have to open up the Excel file, correct? You have to go into the spreadsheet, yep. Okay, or the um, spreadsheet. Yep, and this is what I do. <laughs> I reorder them a little bit. I always start with my longest ones. So when you're looking at your spreadsheet, you know how you can widen your column and wrap it so that it fell. Um, I always start with my longest ones because then that's kind of the first few long ones. That's usually the most in-depth answers you're probably going to get. So I start with that and I'm like, okay, I taught all of that. All the kids could have that and it kind of sets the bar for me. So then when I get to the shorter ones where generally they're less complete, <laughs> then I kind of know how to grade those. So I'm kind of looking for my nines and my tens out of 10 point value things. And I'm trying to work my way down so that I don't start with a kid who writes one line, but maybe hits four or five things in that one sentence. So does that make sense? Yeah. So are you reordering your spreadsheet? I do. Yes. Could you, could you show me like on your, can you pull up a spreadsheet really quick? And I mean, do you mean like you just pull the columns to the front or how do you? When you are trying to move and stuff, the, all I do is I click on the number and then you get the little hand, which is your move. And then I just move this one up. Do you see the black bar going between cells? So I have Brenda right now. Oh, funny. I grab me and I can move me to the top. Okay. So you just reorder the student. You just pull them up to the... The whole row. Yep. Mm -hmm. So to see how long they are, a couple of things that I do, like this one's a little bit longer. So in this column, you don't have to be on the column even, but if you go between the two, you can just drag this to widen it. So you can do individual ones. A shortcut though, is if you click on um, this blank cell, basically, it highlights rows and columns. And then if you resize, it makes them all that size. So notice they're all that same distance now. So you're like, I want them all to be that wide and I want them all to wrap. So the wrapping button is this one over here. It's showing that the text just goes to the right. It starts at the left of the cell and goes to the right. The second button here says, once you get to the end of where I set the cell, wrap down in the cell. So now you can see these long ones are wrapping. So I can read the whole thing. Oh my gosh, I never knew that. Thank you. Yeah. And so when I'm resizing, because it wrapped, you can kind of see which ones are long and short. And of course, if you don't want to widen some because they're so short, <laughs> shrink them back up. Yeah, so that's one thing I do when I grade. I don't know if, I think it was an English teacher that told me one time, like always start with the longest one. And because then you feel like you're making progress. Like, oh, I got that long one done. <laughs> but, 
Anybody else? I'm trying to think, what time are we done here? I should probably look at my calendar. Uh, hey, Brenda, I put a question in chat there. Yes, Eric, what was that? I had put a question in chat. Have you ever done anything with the short answer setting, like setting some parameters for amount of words or the answer must include certain words? I generally don't. Um, and the reason I don't is because um, kids have poor spelling. <laughs> and and um, I don't want to limit based off of their writing skills. So, really sure. Okay. Um, if, another thing that we've kind of had problems with, we use Google Forms quite a bit, and we share them amongst our team. And when we add people as collaborators so that they can do something with it, sometimes they'll change something. Is there a way to share it where they can't change it? Not okay. at this time, no. Um, when I, t I teach the same class as another teacher as well, and we'll use the same things, but we generally just have an understanding and we've, we've talked about it that I'll make it and then you make a copy of it. Yeah. So they have a copy and then they can also adjust to put things in their terminology because we use different verbiage, even though it's the same question. So we do go through and we reread and we go through them together if we have PLC time. And sure. we say, well, I want to phrase it this way. Does that still sound okay? And, and we go through it that way. So we usually make copies, but okay. not until everything is done. <laughs> like set all your <laughs> answers. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm one of those where sometimes I forget to make a copy when someone's changed or shared it with yeah. me. It's like, dang it. <laughs> yeah, okay. and we try to do it in, um, Google Drive. Oh, yes. Yep. Yeah. Do it in the drive. And a lot of times I'm kind of a control freak that way. I'll make it and then I'll make a copy and call. So it's Mrs. Dickman's test four uh, and Mrs. Karna's test four. So I make the copy. I name it hers so she knows which one is hers. Awesome idea. That's great. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much. You bet. All right. Well, it looks like our breakout session is actually done. It was supposed to be done at 9.55. So. Oh, thank you. And yeah. Anybody else, if I look at those? I think that is the only question I see in there now. Well, give it a try. If you ever need anything, look me up on Best Prep here. Shoot me an email. All right. I'll be glad to help you. Have a good rest of the day.